Let's take a look at some um, black and white conversions using Lightroom CC. Um, first question I would uh, often um, ask people is uh, tell me a reason why you want to make a black and white uh, image. Uh, sometimes people will post on social media forums a color version and a black and white version and say which one do you like best. Basically they haven't done that little bit of preparation leading into why would you convert an image to black and white? So let's look at some instances why I would choose to make a black and white conversion. Most of the work that I do is color, but when I know I need a black and white, I am very clear on why black and white versions will look better to the color versions. So this first version is flat midday lighting with uninspiring colors. It's a very dramatic scene, but the colors don't lend that sense of drama to the scene. Normally when I'm photographing landscapes, I'm working with the ambient light much lower that creates those long shadows, better contrast, and this midday lighting isn't really conducive to creating dramatic landscape images. So in this instance, I might simply drop to black and white and go for that Ansel Adams uh, drama effect going on here with very dark skies which will really highlight the clouds in those skies and get some very high contrast going on in these black and white conversions. This is an image I captured at a museum in the countryside in the state of Victoria and uh, I'm looking at the beautiful shadow coming off the tree going over this um, long wall receding into the distance and I decide uh, although we got some complementary colors which I sort of like I think it's um, taking the drama away from the light and shade which should be the real heroes not the blue sky and the orange wall I think it should be the shadow of this of the tree that should be the hero element so if I remove the color from the scene we are going to feature on that big shadow and um, when the guy came and looked at me taking the photograph the guy who is walking into the shot now he said what are you taking a photograph of and I said the shadow he didn't actually notice the shadow until I mentioned that there was a shadow coming off the tree and then he said wow now I can see it too so if I'm communicating this via photography I don't want to have that conversation with everyone I just want them to immediately see the drama of the shadows uh, on a trip to Japan last year uh, I had the opportunity to photograph at a sumo stable. Um, there was some interesting lighting but the differences in color temperature between the fluorescent lighting inside and the cool uh, daylight coming through the window uh, the, just above the sumo wrestlers gave this blue orange. Now normally I like complementary colors but not in these mixed lighting situations. So the other thing I notice is we're getting a lot of rim light on these sumo wrestlers and so I was immediately aware that black and white versions of these sumo wrestlers would be much more dramatic. We're going to notice the uh, the sweat glistening on the bodies of these wrestlers much more readily than uh, once we've removed the color from the scene. So I see this as immediately as a problem solved. So rather than um, changing one of the images in the series to black and white, I changed the entire series of images. So the entire um, uh, documentary or series of uh, sumo wrestlers were all in black and white. And there's a final edited version there. Uh, another reason you may want to convert to black and white is typically we have a sense of history as obviously um, black and white precedes color film and so if we're looking at um, photo documentaries um, maybe from our grandparents time we we're used to seeing images as black and whites from that era so when I was in um, Hiroshima in Japan uh, and I was looking at the hypocenter of the first atomic bomb explosion. Uh, I was quite clear that this series of images would look better in black and white. One, because we can see the drama of the light and shade and the shade of this uh, medical practitioner coming onto the hospital wall there of the which is the hypocenter. But it also has a connection 
with the photographs that we saw um, uh, immediately after uh, when people visited Hiroshima after the atomic bomb and started taking those photographs. So it connects this body of work taken in the present day with the previous body of work uh, taken in 1945. Okay, I always think that black and whites um, should be more than just a single click preset. We do have some profiles and you might create a black and white preset, but I always think a black and white conversion is a little bit like storytelling. The software will never know what, what you think is the hero element in the shot. And uh, this is important. When Ansel Adams was in his dark room, he used a, a technique called dodging and burning either adding more light or adding more depth to the shadows to um, showcase um, information or suppress information. And this is our storytelling narrative. What do we want people to look at? What do we want to shine more light on? Or what do we want people to ignore? And we can control that by making certain subjects lighter and certain subjects darker. So this is my black and white conversion. Ansel Adams was um, uh, often made his skies very dark simply because he didn't really want you to look at the sky itself. Maybe the clouds in the sky, maybe the mountains uh, near the sky, but typically never the blue sky itself. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing your attention to those abandoned huts um, in California on the dry side of the Sierra Nevada um, near Mono Lake in this instance. So the first uh, step might simply just be to go to the color panel and tap the black and white option so it immediately goes from color to black and white. We then uh, have the option of creating a gray mix. We can make some colors lighter and some colors darker and you don't even need to remember what colors are what. You can just say Oh, I like the foreground, maybe there should be more light in the foreground, or maybe the foreground should be darker, maybe the sky needs to be a little bit darker, and you can basically use that target adjustment tool, or selective adjustment, and then just click, uh, or not click, touch, touch and drag on the image itself to make certain uh, tones darker or lighter. Um, this will not get you all of the way, in my opinion, to the perfect black and white conversion. You will want to follow up with some dodging and burning, some linear filters, maybe some radial filters. So I'm adding um, a linear graduated filter to the top. In fact, I've added three. I've also added one to the foreground there to build up and uh, control exactly the fall off from, from those top bright um, clouds up to the very dark sky at the top of the image. Uh, I'll then follow up with some um, uh, painted adjustments using the adjustment brush, um, adding a little bit more light to the huts and the distant mountains there. I might also um, make sure that if I am painting a little bit clumsily, I then go and subtract any of the halos um, from where I've uh, accidentally painted an adjustment that I don't need to be in that area. You may also, if you, um, if you don't have a stylus or a pen to work with your tablet, you might want to just tap the image so you zoom the image so you can work uh, much uh, closer to the edge than zoomed out uh, when working with the panels open. You'll also want to maybe change the nature of what the adjustment is doing. For instance, I've moved from a tonal adjustment now to a clarity adjustment. And the clarity adjustment is because those distant mountains, the Sierra Nevadas, they're a little bit uh, flat in contrast because of the extra ultraviolet light in the distance there. So, um, so what we're doing is we're just building up the depth of those distant mountains so they don't look quite so flat. So I do have a tutorial on my website. It does use the uh, Lightroom Classic version, but all of the tools you have access to, you pretty much have access to on the mobile version. So you can download this um, image as well and try working up this image and try and get to the endpoint that I am using um, as an example here. 
The other thing I should mention about um, uh, black and white conversions is don't forget the profiles as well. The profiles is an excellent starting point before we even can um, uh, look at um, uh, color mixes or tonal mixes for black and white. We should uh, look at those black and white um, uh, profiles as well. I've got a couple of these saved as favorites for me and uh, here I'm using the black and white three uh, filter and this is uh, will get me half of the way there uh, before I add the um, the linear graduated filters etc. So and I'll just show you, showcase some of the beautiful black and white conversions that uh, I've been doing in Lightroom, uh, both the classic version but also the uh, the CC versions as well, and certainly showing the why I might decide to work with black and white in these instances, because for me the San Jones is all um, a story about light and shade, not so much about the blue sky or even uh, the pale orange sand itself. It's just about where the light is falling and not falling. So let's move over to uh, another associated topic called toning. Is um, Sometimes uh, we can not only choose white balance, but we can choose to selectively move colors within an image to, uh, for creative control or communication of narrative story. So I'll just show you a couple of examples. Here's a full color version. We're actually in a park here and uh, it's a sunlit day. There's a lot of very bright green tones surrounding my sitter in this uh, photograph. And some of that, those green tones are populating the dark shadow tones of my sitter sitting in the shadows. So one of the things that I'm going to do is move the vibrance down to get rid of some of those subtle colors. And then I can control the overall color uh, of the image using the temperature slider. It's a little bit like creating a sepia tone effect without going fully monochromatic here. So I'm using uh, what we've learned about the vibrant slider and uh, then swinging the color temperature from cool to warm just for that uh, little bit of effect. You can see it's not fully sepia because the lips, which had a little bit of saturation, still have a little bit of their natural color. They're not going Showing that uh, brown color, they're still held on to a little bit of their their cherry color there. And what I've done is I've just worked this image a little bit more and just done um, a selective adjustment on the eyes with the color temperature set to very cool just to enhance uh, the, the blue eyes to bounce off the warmer brown tones in this image. And I've just raised some of the natural color on the lips there just to finish this image. And this whole image edit again probably took place in no more than a minute. And another example going a little bit more green on the eyes now um, and just um, a little bit more um, uh, warmth in those lips. Another um, toning effect that we have, now I would have placed it in the color panel but um, Adobe have chosen to put it in the effects panel. I suppose it is an effect but um, it is a color toning effect so I generally would have put it in the color panel by choice. This is uh, split toning. It's where we can choose um, to uh, use one color that will populate the highlights and usually a complementary color to populate the shadows within the image. And um, here I am choosing one color for the highlights, a warm color, a cooler color for the shadows. And then I'll come in with the final slider, which is the balance slider, to basically choose the axis of the seesaw, if you like, between uh, shadows and highlights. I decided I wanted more of the tones to be highlights, i.e. populated by those warm tones. So I just moved the balance slider to the right there. Here I am using split toning, not to create accurate color, but again to create uh, some um, creative or emotive uses of color. And I'm split toning a full color image in this instance. So that yellow line running along um, uh, the pier here in the rain uh, does have a natural yellow tone. So we're not completely stripping away some of the natural color. I'm just using um, uh, chosen colors to populate the highlight lights and shadows uh, either side of the mid-tones there. So there is a before and after, a much more subtle uh, version of split toning here. 
Another example, this is the full color version. I'm going into the effects panel, choosing split toning, choosing a warmer color for my highlights that will typically include some of the skin tones in your image as well. And then choosing a complementary color for the shadows uh, again, usually cool tones. Be sure to check out all of the movies in this Lightroom CC Masterclass series. There's also a supporting ebook that you can download from my website. Just head over to www.markgaylor.com and then look for that downloads link. If you find any of my resources useful, just consider making a small donation. This will help me create future learning resources. I also host uh, a Patreon uh, site. This is uh, going to allow you to join Q&A forums where you'll have your individual questions answered and also attend seminars. I'll also give a photo critique service. Okay, so uh, thumbs up if you've enjoyed the movie and I'll catch you online next time.